You see me? <laughs> oh, no. OK, OK. I'm, I'm just curious. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brian. Um, I don't want you to fall asleep in my presentation, but I also understand we just ate lunch. And many of my students tell me I have a soothing voice. And so I do see them nodding off in my classes, um, <laughs> not infrequently. So um, I will at least understand if it happens. But here's my agenda for what I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, overview of my project, uh, and then within that, go a little bit more into detail about teaching I'll be doing, uh, RTP, my research, and then if there's time for any questions or discussion. Um, <clears throat> thank you all for being here. Thank you to the Fulbright Commission for all you've done. It's been a great day so far. I feel like I'm back in school, and I mean that in a good way. Uh, this is, I had a similar conversation at lunch with several people. This is probably one of the only points in time in many of our careers, maybe maybe ever, that you get to hear such a diversity of different um, perspectives. So it's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, thanks to all of you for sharing your, your work. A um, little bit about me. Um, I'm an associate teaching professor in the Bach School of Management at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, or UMKC. Uh, that is UMKC. I'm going to use a laser. Yeah, that's my building right there. Um, I teach courses in technology management, technology entrepreneurship, product development, and uh, data analytics at both the undergraduate and graduate levels. Um, and my research interests are applied network science and computational social science, which uh, don't get to do a lot of in the classes that I teach, but um, I. I would talk to any of you for hours about it if you if you want to know. Um, and computational social science, if you don't know the term, is basically using huge data sets to look at kind of more social questions. Um, uh, I did my PhD in systems engineering from Colorado State University, uh, MS in engineering, specifically digital and electrical communication systems at Arkansas. And then I also got my MBA at UMKC, which is where I, I teach now. Um, and so hence, that's why I tend to do a lot of the more technical things in the business school. Um, I love to do anything outdoors, like a lot of you have mentioned, uh, uh, running, the, me running the Kansas City Marathon. Um, this is me in the Computer History Museum in uh, Mountain View, California. So if you ever have a chance to go, I highly recommend it. It's a great museum. Regardless of if you're interested in technology or not, it's a fantastic museum. Uh, but if you are interested in technology, it's even better. Um, so that's me holding uh, a cable. I think it was from the 60s, maybe the 70s, that uh, transferred the same amount of data as a USB cable does nowadays. And then uh, someone mentioned uh, punch cards earlier. Uh, this was a program uh, in punch cards that wrote out my name. Um, and then. I also have some experience uh, working with wine, which you'll you'll see why that is relevant in a little bit. Uh, that's me working uh, uh, crush harvest and crush season one year, um, and I also started a wine importing company to import Chilean wines to the U.S. from small Chilean uh, wineries, boutique wineries. Um, so that's a little bit about, a little bit about me. Uh, here's my project. So the the title of the project itself is data-driven innovation and management in Chilean businesses. Um, and there's this quote from The Economist magazine that you probably all at least have heard the gist of. Uh, and it was, the world's most valuable resource is no longer oil, but data. That was 2017, but and they get the credit for coining the term or, or, or the phrase, but uh, it was used at least three years earlier uh, than, than that uh, when um, uh, Joris Tunders and Wired in 2014 said data is the new oil of the digital economy. And so um, that's that's kind of the common thread across what I'll be doing both in the teaching and in the research. Um, and in the US, you know, we're seeing uh, more and more uh, business processes being driven by data and even uh, to the point now where the business processes themselves are being designed around what sorts of data will we have access to or can we get access to. And um, it's true also in Latin America, um, and there's a lot of interest in it um, in Chile. I'll be working with the operations and analytics group at uh, in the School of Business at Universidad de Fibanes here in Santiago. Uh, there's about 10 members of this group uh, made up of computer scientists, uh, operations researchers, business administration, statisticians, and industrial engineers. So really great great group of people that I'm excited to get to work with. Uh, I'll be doing roughly 60% teaching, 40% research. 
Uh, on the teaching side, I'll be teaching data analytics courses. Uh, research will be utilizing machine learning and network analysis methods to develop predictive models for the Chilean wine industry. And then uh, outreach, I'm in discussions right now with some local businesses here in Santiago about hosting some free workshops for the local entrepreneurial community. Um, those have not yet been confirmed, which is why I didn't have said specifically what they are. But um, this is Adolfo Ibanez um, on the outskirts of Santiago. Difficult to get to, unfortunately, um, but a uh, uh, beautiful campus. So I've heard, I haven't been yet. <laughs> um, on the teaching side, I'll be developing new curriculum in conjunction with uh, full-time uh, full permanent UAI faculty uh, and will also be teaching. Uh, so on the curriculum development side, um, I'll be developing the courses, which I will also be teaching. Uh, one course is uh, called Business Analytics. It's in their Master in Business Analytics program, which is, for me, pretty interesting. That's also part of the reason I wanted to come here is because they have a dedicated program specifically to business analytics. Uh, and that's something that my university is soon to launch. Um, and so it'll, I'm interested in hearing what's worked well for them and what hasn't worked as well for them to bring back to my university. And then I'll be teaching a class called Programming 2 in R, which is a computer programming language. Any of you in here do any programming? Uh, I'm more of a Python guy, but they needed uh, somebody to teach R, so I said, yeah, you can do that. Um, <laughs> it's also uh, in the Master in Business Analytics program. And then I'll be teaching those same courses. Um, so this Business Analytics course does not yet exist, at least not in its current form, and same for this course. Um, so I'll, I'll leave behind all of my content and materials for, um, for my colleagues here as well. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a few short courses, workshops, seminars. Uh, one of them is titled Cybersecurity Risk in Supply Chain Management. The same university has a Master in Supply Chain Management program. Um, so I'll be doing a specific workshop, about a six-hour workshop in cybersecurity risk management for, for that program. Uh, RTP. Um, if you don't know what it stands for, is the Regional Travel Program. So um, I don't know if the students have the opportunity for that also, but the, uh, it's a uh, seems like a great opportunity for, for the scholars. So I applied for that and we'll be going to uh, next month visit the Universidad de los Andes in Bogota. Um, thanks to the support of the RTP, that's um, Uni Andes in Bogota. Um, and there I'll be doing a series of workshops. I'll launch a new research project collaboration with a colleague there and meet with program leaders to discuss Similar things that I mentioned, uh, me being interested in learning about the business analytics program at Adolfo Ibanez, same there. They've got a couple of programs that are similar to programs we are interested in launching at UMKC and that I hope to gain a perspective on. Uh, the workshops I'll be doing are data ethics for business analytics and big data. Uh, I'll be doing a technology and innovation management talk um, in their SEMS program, which is an international exchange program and a research colloquium, which they call Agora. On the research side, just, so this is where I'll spend uh, most of my time talking uh, today. Um, if you didn't know, you probably do. Wine production and export is a key industry in Chile. Uh, roughly $2 billion of economic value in wine exports alone in 2021. But um, in 2023, exports of Chilean wine decreased by about 18% by volume and by 20% in terms of value uh, compared to 2022. Um, and production decreased by about 11% in the same time, time period. So uh, decreases in exports um, don't aren't coming only because production was lower. There's something else going on. Historically, about 90% of Chilean wine production has been exported. Um, so. Uh, they're the, I think this changes a little bit from year to year, but generally Chile is the fourth largest wine producing country in the world and not that big of a population. So no matter how much you try here, you're not going to be able to drink all the wine that you produce. So that's why so much of it gets exported. Um, and this was a, uh, a couple of quotes that I pulled from a study from the Universidad de Talca uh, that says, um, Chile is uh, confronting uh, structural uh, weaknesses related to um, uh, uh, like uh, falta uh, uh, of um, of labor, uh, uh, experienced labor, and industry has been um, become has become more complex as it's grown um, in recent years, and so this continues to highlight part of what might be going on related to this issue up here. Uh, so what? Uh, 
this is this is the headline of an article from a publication called Vine Tour. Chilean wine and crisis facing global demand shifts and local challenges and industry struggle against falling demand. And then the article itself goes on to say, the overall picture calls for adaptive strategies and possibly a substantial restructuring of the sector. And so Chilean growers and winemakers can benefit from having greater insight and foresight into global market trends for wine generally and for Chilean wine specifically. Uh, this is kind of a little bit related to some of the comments we've heard about, like the big industrialized ag sectors. Um, like the big producers, they're going to be fine. Um, but the small producers, which are the ones that I know best, uh, they don't have teams of people that can do data analysis or, or adopt new technologies. Um, so I see this work being especially of interest or of use for uh, the smaller side of the producer market, but um, hopefully for all of them. Uh, so it's got two, the project itself has two parts to it, uh, and taken together they give a more holistic, nuanced, and comprehensive understanding of Chile's place in the global wine landscape. Uh, so the, the novelty and the scholarly contribution lie in the integrated approach, uh, one being scope and two being methodology. So the first part of the project will aim to better understand the supplier or the producer portion of the Chilean wine industry. And the second aims to better understand the demand or the consumer portion of the wine industry. And so that's that's part of what I mean by the, the scope. Uh, there's been lots of studies about either or of these, but um, at least that I've been able to find not a lot that look at the two of them in conjunction with one another. Um, I mentioned my PhDs in systems engineering, so um, Pretty much everything I do, I look at with a systems um, mindset. And so uh, I, I plan to take a systems approach here with a holistic view of the wine, Chilean wine supply, supply chain, not just its constituent parts. Um, and a fusion of met methodologies that historically haven't been applied together with one or another in this area. Um, they have been applied together in other areas, but not this one. Um, so I already mentioned the first one, first part of the project, understanding Chilean wine export trends. I'll be using machine learning methods for that. That's on the supply side. On the demand side, uh, I'm calling it uncovering global market preferences for Chilean wine using machine learning. So both parts of, these, of this project utilize machine learning and network analysis methods uh, to develop predictive models for global prospects for Chilean wine. Uh, so a little bit more about part one. Uh, this part of the project aims to identify patterns and predict future trends in Chilean wine exports by analyzing historical export data. So anybody can go today and see where Chilean wine is going. That's, that's very surface level analysis, so I'm not going to do that. That's already out there. Um, but for instance, uh, uh, we might be able to uh, uncover factors that may not be obvious for, that may be correlated with um, certain countries uh, importing or not uh, Chilean wine. And that's one of the interesting things about machine learning and AI is that it often helps us discover things, factors or variables that are, that do have a real correlation with some phenomenon, but that we as just humans may not ever suspect otherwise. Um, and so, well, I won't go into that, but um, so part two is um, in the, on, the, on the demand side, this part of the project seeks to map global preferences for Chilean wine varietals, analyzing how export volumes to different countries correlate with consumer ratings and market trends. Uh, here, machine learning models may un uncover preferences for types, varietals, or styles in different markets. Uh, network analysis methods, which again, this is kind of my, my main area of research interest, may uncover hidden network structure or behavior. Uh, things like influence, who are the uh, most influential people, organizations, companies in the supply chain for uh, Chilean wine, bottlenecks, etc. So I'll just briefly go into my research questions. Um, part one, how have the, the patterns of Chilean wine exports evolved over the past decade? Can we identify predictive indicators of future export trends in key global markets? So uh, you won't be surprised to learn that uh, if, you, if you wanted to go and start a vineyard today, it's going to be at least three years and you go and you go and plant your own vines today, it's going to be at least three years before you have a commercial um, vintage and probably 10 years before you're break even or profitable uh, if you're lucky. And so uh, growers and wineries need to make these types of investment decisions today, but they're going to have to be trying to predict what's going to be happening with the market next year, three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. Um, and so I think this is one of the most interesting pieces of this work is potentially being able to help them have more insight with those types of decisions. 
what is the network structure or topology of Chilean wine exports? Which countries uh, or nodes serve as central hubs in this network, influencing global distribution of Chilean wines? On the demand side, uh, what are the prevailing consumer preferences for Chilean wine varietals in key international markets? How do these correlate with market-specific demographic and economic factors? So things like income level, education levels, um, consumption of other goods, uh, even if they're not you know, alcohol-based goods. How are preferences for Chilean wine types interconnected across different global markets? Um, and can a network analysis reveal patterns or trends in the international wine trade that are not apparent using traditional analysis methods? Uh, so the contribution or the novelty here, I hope, uh, one is the integrative approach. So again, both in the scope as well as in the methodology. Um, and while this project is specific to the Chilean wine industry, it may yield results that are generalizable to better understanding other complex economic systems uh, or production systems generally. Um, these may be other global wine markets, they may be other global commodity markets, um, et cetera. Uh, there is some existing related research, uh, but most of this is at basically the unit of the bottle of wine, not at the unit or not at the system level. Uh, so a lot of research using machine learning has been, well, a fair amount of research using machine learning has been done to predict prices of wine based on chemical analysis factors like acidity and those types of things. Um, so as early as 2015 and then several papers uh, just in the past year or so related to, to this. Uh, but again, these are all focused at the bottle level. So methodologies, uh, I've mentioned machine learning and network analysis methods. In general, uh, the, the way to think about these if you're not familiar with them is machine learning is about pattern recognition, um, understanding trend. And so in, in this case, uh, it'll be about understanding trends, classifying data points and predicting data points. Uh, and then network analysis is about understanding network structure, behavior, and interestingly, oftentimes hidden drivers of barriers to network performance. Uh, so on the machine learning side, for the production part of the project, I'll be using time series forecasting, various types of regression analysis, uh, random forest or gradient boosting machines. On the demand side for machine learning, looking at sentiment analysis, topic modeling, and clustering algorithms. So these, okay, uh, I should be right on time. Uh, uh, so these are, uh, for the demand side, a lot of that's going to be looking at comments on social media talking about uh, Chilean wine. So it are, what, what's the sentiment towards Chilean wine, not just in general, but in, let's say, China or in the US or in Brazil. Um, so that's kind of what sentiment analysis is. Topic modeling is maybe a slightly more specific version of that where we can find topics, not surprisingly, that um, are being talked about in a particular social media post and then clustering algorithms. So can we cluster preferences by some sort of common characteristics? Um, network network uh, methodologies are as follows. A lot of you have probably s at least seen visualizations like this. These are the types of things that network scientists love to make and that uh, always turn a lot of heads, really interesting network visualizations. These are not my work, uh, but some interesting ones that I pulled from the internet. Uh, so this is uh, what a lot of people, if they know networks, this is what they think of. Um, on the production side, we're using uh, centrality measures, uh, community detection. On the demand side, weighted graphs, node strength analysis. Um, and one other thing to, to mention about the methodologies, why they're interesting to use together is because uh, if we want to be able to model a system as a network like this, we have to have the data in the right format and the right structure. And so the machine learning methods can help us get the data into a structure that we can then also do a network analysis where it may not otherwise already be like that. Um, So expected outputs and outcomes on the scholarly side, uh, possibility of emer observing emergent behavior. Uh, if, if you're a complexity scientist, that's really interesting. Basically that means um, you know, one plus one is more than two. Uh, so the, the, sum of, the, the sum of parts of a system is greater than um, its individual components. Um, and I plan to submit, submit to present findings at INFORMS and or DSI, which are uh, analytics related conferences um, to gain additional feedback and strengthen the research and then eventually drafting um, uh, that, that improved research based on feedback from the conferences for submission to peer reviewed academic journals. Uh, and then also on the practitioner side, I, I 
come from a lot of uh, uh, background in the open source software community. So for me, everything, uh, almost everything I do always is, um, I want it to be available to the general world. Uh, so I, I do plan to make available, available my work methods and results to the general public, including the Chilean wine industry at large, and then also drafting of a white paper to disseminate findings and discussion to industry specifically. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Save, save the questions for the... Uh...